I'm going to kind of continue a bit where Nick's talk left off. Nick mentioned uh, this morning in a, in a really nice talk that network telemetry is one of the killer apps for programmable data planes. And so I'm going to talk a bit about why that is and some examples of ways we can exploit uh, the new emerging hardware data planes to support uh, more programmable telemetry and walk through a bunch of the abstractions that people in the research community have been proposing for doing uh, measurement uh, in the data plane and then look forward towards some new abstractions that are still lacking to make the story complete. So essentially not only are forward our programmable data planes here to stay, but measurement is here to stay as well. And the reason for that is that measurement plays such a key role in the operation of networks. In fact, knowing what's going on in your network is often harder than knowing what to do about it. And so if you think about just to take a few simple tasks, traffic engineering, you need to know the offered load in your network, the traffic matrix. You may want to know the available bandwidth on different paths in your network, or even the distribution of queue links in your network to get a better, smaller timescale understanding of congestion. If you're trying to offer service level agreements to your customers, you may want to know something statistical about the traffic, you know, what fraction of the packets are lost or out of order what the jitter might be and whether it's within your statistical targets, or even more subtle things like application-specific quality of experience metrics, like mean opinion scores for things like voice over IP or, or video. Going further, if something's going wrong in your network, you may want to troubleshoot at the individual connection level. Is this connection bottlenecked because the sender is just not sending data fast enough, uh, which might indicate some problem on the server, or is the network congested or the RTT high, or is the receiver not draining packets from the receive buffer quickly enough? As Nick mentioned in his talk, if a connection is experiencing bad performance, you might wonder who's in the queue with it. And if it, in a connection's bottleneck, you might not know which link is the one that's causing the problem. And then there's just a whole raft of security uh, reasons people want to be able to monitor their network to be able to understand if someone's a victim of a DNS amplification attack, receiving too many unsolicited DNS responses. You may want to know which flows are heavy hitters in your network because some of those heavy hitter flows might be malicious. You may want to know if there are any hosts in your network that are contacting an unusually large number of destinations, indicative of perhaps a, a malicious machine. Sin floods traffic evading a firewall and so on and in fact as, as adversaries get more crafty they in fact also have a huge programmable infrastructure at their disposal all the machines they've compromised all over the internet so it's sort of time for the good guys if you will to have a programmable infrastructure to fight back and because the adversary never stops innovating we, we can't either so as Nick mentioned, the state of the art for network measurement is still pretty awful because it's tied to the capabilities of, of legacy equipment. Very coarse grained, very inflexible. You can get things like NetFlow and SFlow, but often with one in a thousand or one in 10,000 sampling with relatively limited control over how it's done. Or using things like ping and trace route that add traffic to the network and only give you indirect information about what your actual traffic might really be experiencing. What we really need is the ability to collect fine-grained information specific to the task at hand and to be able to collect not only traffic statistics but also performance information. And that's exactly what these forwarding planes are, are allowing us to do. So this picture is very similar to the one Nick presented. I'm only going to highlight one thing a little differently than he did. is flexible parsing that will allow us to extract the information that we really want out of the packets the ability to match packets in different ways after they've been parsed, to act on them in flexible ways. And I'm going to highlight that some of those memories are not just doing match action processing, but might be more general purpose registers that are able to read and, and modif be read and modified over time to keep state across successive packets beyond basic counters that we normally think of in things like open flow rule tables. And then finally, that state can also be passed along from one stage of processing to the next and so on. So this gives us a really unique opportunity to customize the collection of data to the analysis task at hand, rather than resorting to really aggressive sampling and aggregation to collect data. And in fact, we actually kind of have to customize the data collection to the query because we have such limited uh, memory and computation in these devices that we really can't afford to collect everything and, and analyze it offline. So what we need then are a set of good abstractions for collecting measurement data from the network. And we need to balance this tension between wanting those abstractions to be sufficiently expressive to represent the kind of tasks I talked about in the first several slides, and yet amenable to being compiled down to this kind of unusual computational model that these programmable forwarding planes presents. And so for that, we really need a good software stack of language abstractions, good compilers and runtime systems, and finally, uh, building blocks that we know can work well at the switch level to collect statistics about traffic uh, and performance. 
So what I'm going to do in the next part of the talk is kind of walk through a kind of a, a review of a bunch of different papers in the literature that have proposed the beginnings of what these abstractions might look like and try to highlight a bit how each of them leverage in their compilation some of the capabilities of the emerging hardware. This is an incomplete story. The goal here is to, to provide sort of structure and framing to help, help guide further work that might bring all these pieces and more together into a really complete solution to this problem. So the first thing that a, a number of, the, of papers have, have proposed is that we view packets themselves as tuples of the sort that you might have in a database, whether a streaming database or an offline one. And those tuples can store information about the packet itself, the relevant header fields, the sizes of the packet, where they are in the network, what switch they're at, what port, even what queue, and even potentially metadata that exists in the switch at the instant that that packet is located at that queue. How deep is the queue, for example? And other things like what time it is uh, from that at the time that that packet visits that location in the network. Once you have this stream of tuples, and in fact, it can be a flexible stream of tuples, because if you have programmable parsing, you can parse exactly the fields you need and, not, and nothing more and nothing less. And the metadata that these switches provide in line to packets as they're flowing through allow us to augment the, the tuples that come just from the packet itself with information about where and when that packet uh, visited a particular place in the switch. Going further, you can now take all that information and, and ask questions about it to filter down a particular set of packets you want to group together for the sake of measurement. So you can do Boolean predicates uh, over these tuple values. This is appealing because it avoids having to think about low-level rules. These match action tables are very powerful, but they really represent just a, a bit mask with wildcards on which to match packets. It's a very clumsy interface to, to programmers. So you could imagine, just as a really trivial example, I want to look at all traffic coming from a particular destination IP address with destination destination port 80, let's say web server traffic, or traffic coming from a particular source, that would take two different match action rules to represent because you can't really do an or in a single rule. But now you could collect statistics or perform the same action for both of these rules and group statistics together for all traffic that satisfies that predicate. More generally, you might imagine negation, where you might take, I want to look at all traffic that does not have destination IP address 1234, and I can implement that as one rule that matches the stuff I don't care about, so that the traffic I do care about falls through the next rule where a particular action is performed. All right, so what's important for the programmer is that they can just think in, in terms of Boolean predicates rather than these low-level bit twiddlings that we normally worry about in the data plane. Going further, you could imagine the packets that have been grouped together by these Boolean predicates falling into particular buckets that we want to collect data about. This could mean that we want to collect the individual packets themselves because we actually care about the details of the contents of those packets, or just counters that count the number of bytes packets or even tuples, or even more sophisticated notions of counting, like the number of unique items. For example, think about the security applications I mentioned. If I wanted to know the number of different senders that are sending DNS responses to a particular victim of a DNS amplification attack, I don't just want to count the number of DNS packets. I want to count the number of unique senders. Uh, so being able to count not just the number of items, but the number of unique items in a stream is, is really useful as well. And then I can imagine aggregating data a whole bunch of different ways. I can group by header fields to say I want to collect statistics for all traffic matching a particular, let's say, source IP address. I could do something periodically with a sliding or fixed window, like every 60 seconds I want these statistics, or even more sophisticated notions where I might want to start a new counter or a new traffic statistic whenever a particular condition is met uh, inside the network. And then finally, I might not really care about all of the statistics. I may only care about the outliers. I may care only about counts above a threshold or the top K counts. So all of these things are very nicely facilitated by the capabilities of these modern data planes. Right, the counters that exist in rule tables already, even in OpenFlow, allow us to get basic byte and packet counters. If you have multiple stages of tables and the ability to do things like sketches, there are a number of nice data structures that are easily amenable to implementation in the switch that would allow us to efficiently count the number of unique items. Going further, we can collect statistics on a, on a rapidly changing set of, let's say, source IP addresses by dynamically adding new rules to the switch as new sources manifest themselves. Um, and we can report outliers and collect statistics only for outliers at a more efficient rate. So if you might have 10,000 flows, but you only care about the top 10, you can keep state proportional to the 10 flows you care about, not the 10,000 flows that you don't. And there have been a number of works, many of them listed below, that have started to exploit those observations to be able to answer, uh, answer queries more efficiently. Going further, a number of papers have proposed that often you don't care about individual switches in the network. You really want to analyze the network collectively, network-wide. 
So people have talked about a sort of one big switch abstraction where you think of the network, uh, network fabric as just the internals of a single big switch that interconnects all the hosts in the network. Uh, this is appealing for a lot of tasks like measuring the traffic matrix where you only care about the ingress egress traffic volumes and not what's going on in between or you want a network-wide view of denial of service attacks or, or heavy hitters and that involves the ability of having a collector or a controller that might grab the statistics from multiple locations in the network to aggregate them together and in particular this gets really interesting if you only want to do things like the heavy hitters you want to be able to figure out what's heavy network-wide rather than what's heavy locally uh, at each switch but this is really just a special case of a more general point that you might want to ask questions about the path a traffic takes through the network. Caring only about where the traffic starts and where it ends is really just a degenerative case of more broadly wanting to ask questions about regular expressions over the paths that packets take through the network. And so here's a, a simple example. I might want to know about all traffic that has source port 80, web, web client traffic that it starts at switch two and, and sw uh, starts at switch one and ends at switch two. I could imagine a more sophisticated query, maybe for security reasons, I want to know about all traffic in the network that doesn't go through a firewall. I've got one switch in the network where I'm enforcing my security policy, and there could be a whole bunch of paths through the network that don't go uh, through the firewall, and I want to make sure I know about traffic that manages to evade that firewall switch. In this case, if you look at the regular expression, I'm looking at a regular expression of switch not equal to firewall for every hop in a package journey it means that this packet is suspect to somehow managed to evade my intended security policy. So this seems like a more complicated thing that might be hard to implement in the network, but again, these modern switches have capabilities to do exactly that. A regular expression can be very naturally encoded as a deterministic finite automata. This really simple example I mentioned at the beginning, you might start at an initial state, and if the first condition holds, transition to a second state, and then if the second condition can holds after the first condition is held, you're now in an accepting state where you want to collect statistics about the traffic. And this can be very nicely mapped into these data planes by taking the state, Q0, Q1, Q2, and using it as a tag on the packets as they go from one hop to the next, and using the match action tables in each switch to implement the transitions from one state to the next. So a really simple example, if you were to look at switch one in this example, a packet that comes into switch one marked that in state Q0, uh, if it has source port equal to 80, the action would be to actually tag the packet with a new state that indicates its progress towards state Q1. You might imagine a similar kind of rule in the next switch, depending on the conditions on the next arc. And so you can take a network-wide regular expression and distribute it as a collection of match action tables and packet metadata that can implement the semantics of a, of a network-wide regular expression. And, if, and in fact, another thing you can do that, that Nick alluded to already in his talk is as the packet traverses multiple hops in the network, you can actually aggregate statistics about what it's experiencing along its journey. This could be as simple as tagging the packet with information about the queues, the forwarding rules, uh, the latency, and so on that it experienced. But you can also do various forms of da data aggregation as the traffic goes through the network if those tags would otherwise get too big. So for example, what you might care about for a traffic engineering application is let's say the minimum available bandwidth on the path. So you know if this path is a suitable alternative to another path for, for future routing. In which case, as the packet goes through the network, you might imagine accumulating the minimum of the available bandwidth seen at each hop in its journey. Similarly, you might care about total queuing delay as an indication of the queuing experience of traffic experiences network-wide. And again, you can sum that information up as the packets go through the network. That's appealing both because it allows you to actually aggregate the data to make the packet tags smaller, but perhaps more importantly, at the point you want to collect all the data, you have the single number you care about rather than a more complex computation that needs to be done. So that last switch in the journey now can aggregate statistics across many such packets that have taken many such paths to collect more interesting statistics uh, that group multiple packets together. So if you combine the ideas on the previous slide and the ideas on this one, you can group packets together based not only on their header fields, but the kinds of journeys they took through the network, and then aggregate their end-to-end -end statistics across one another uh, based on being able to tag the information in the packet. So a very powerful set of abstractions that really let us talk about network performance on groups of packets. Um, a paper that's going to be presented this week at SIGCOM, NetQRE, looks also at regular expressions, but in a different way. Regular expressions across multiple packets, even at a single switch, to be able to ask more subtle questions about the experiences within a single connection or group of related connections. For example, you might say a TCP connection is a regular expression where a SYN packet is followed by zero or more non-SYN packets. And if you want to go further and analyze things like SYN flood attacks, you might look for incomplete handshakes. 
how many flows start with a sin, get a sin act from the server, but never have a subsequent act packet or other data packets afterwards with sequence numbers that follow. That regular expression aggregated over many packets would allow you to study how many incomplete handshakes might be coming from a particular set of sources to a potential victim, allowing you to analyze and, and detect victims of sin flood attacks. And you can imagine combining this with further ideas that the paper elaborates on to split streams, to be able to take a large application level flow and break it down to constituent components, and then also iterate within and between streams. Going further, I think this is starting to get into areas we don't really know how to handle very well. Uh, queries might naturally not talk about IP addresses, port numbers, uh, low-level gray details like that, but instead higher-level names like Netflix.com or the name of a tenant in a data center, or even specific applications like Skype or Netflix or types of applications like video. And finally, as, as the NetQRE paper gets out a bit as well, you might want to group related flows together to be able to ask questions about an application layer session. Uh, rather than a specific TCP connection. And there's some, some potential hooks here. In many cases, you either know the IP addresses of the services you care about, or you can parse the DNS packets as they go through the switch to be able to dynamically learn the mapping between names and the associated IP addresses. The nice thing about DNS being a single packet protocol is it is amenable to being uh, analyzed in these pizza switches. Uh, you can use DNS to help analyze application types and, in fact, even do more complex forms of application identification by looking at packet sizes and timings in the data plane and gradually infer what application a particular flow might correspond to. Uh, grouping related flows is a little more complicated, but you can certainly imagine grouping multiple TCP connections between the same end host pairs and also looking at the timing of those connections to be able to infer that, that flows belong together. So the larger idea here is if we can further elevate the abstractions to what network operators actually care about, that their customers accessing applications they care about or getting the performance they need, then it becomes possible to take the burden off the network administrator of synthesizing that down to network level identifiers, let alone low level bit twiddling rules that we might put in the programmable data plane. So we've got a lot of building blocks that people have already identified that can run in data planes. I think there, there's a lot more to do here. Just the sort of five standard things I think people tend to do. One is filtering just using, let's say, rules in the data plane to match only on the packets of interest, like just DNS responses by looking at DNS traffic, uh, aggregating by some portion of the packet header field, sampling by computing a hash on some of the header fields, sketching to be able to, in, in a reasonable amount of space with some accuracy trade-offs, be able to get answers to, to questions that we care about. And also looking over time, drilling down over time into the traffic we actually care about when we don't know ahead of time which, is, which needle in the haystack we're actually looking for. And perhaps the most interesting point is any given query might warrant using more than one of these or could be done different ways. So figuring out for the condition at hand and also for the switch capabilities at hand, which of these is the most appropriate way to balance the trade-offs between overhead and accuracy uh, in collecting data, I think is a, is a really exciting area. And this just focuses on a single query. Imagine how much more complicated this gets if you have multiple queries coexisting and new ones coming and going over time, all needing to share the same resources in the data plane. Uh, it becomes a really interesting question how to optimize the selection and use of, of these and perhaps not yet foreseen data reduction uh, techniques. So, so there are a lot of technique challenges here. I just mentioned the first one already, but picking the right data reduction technique for a given scenario, dividing resources among multiple queries, and recognizing when two queries can be fruitfully combined together because they need at least some aspects of, of data that are common so that, that certain data can be collected once rather than twice. Um, certainly being able to do more distributed execution of these queries. I mean, so it gave some examples of that in the context of queries over paths and aggregation of statistics over paths, but there's so much more we could do here. Every packet is an opportunity to, to ferry statistics from one place in the network to another, whether those statistics concern that packet or other information we want aggregated at some point in the network. So there's an interesting opportunity here to really think of a distributed execution environment on these switches that could allow us to collect and aggregate data, doing bounded work on each packet, but hopefully answering a much richer set of questions than we, than we think of today. And I hinted a little bit in talking about sketches and sampling. Those are techniques that sacrifice accuracy to reduce overhead because you don't want to look at all packets or you don't want to keep state about all flows. Uh, so we need to have better ways for network administrators to articulate in their queries what their re reasonable tolerance is for missing information or for information that has error bars on it 
if you care about the top k flows, you may not need to know exactly how many bytes each flow had as long as you know it's within plus or minus a few percent of accuracy. So figuring out both what kinds of tolerances important applications have for error and then how to exploit that to further reduce the overhead of collecting those statistics in the data plane seems like a, an exciting opportunity for, for future work. And finally, um, not all of the targets, even not all P4 targets, have the same capabilities. They differ in the number of stages, the amount of metadata, the amount of computation they can do. And certainly some devices can do much more than a, than a piece of switch could ever do in terms of going deeper into the packet contents or in keeping richer notions of state across packet boundaries. Uh, so we're figuring out how to best exploit end hosts and switches and network interface cards and a wide variety of other devices that operate at different speeds with different execution models is another, I think, exciting compilation opportunity, even if we don't make the, the query infrastructure richer uh, than it already is. And then finally, uh, better abstraction. Some of these I hinted at already, being, bringing accuracy tolerance into the queries, being able to talk more richly about statistical properties that we want to collect. This comes up particularly in service level agreements. Talking about traffic that's bidirectional rather than thinking of single unidirectional TCP flows. And finally, a last topic that's a, a sort of a opening a can of worms, so I hesitate to mention it at the beginning, but at the end, but often we're collecting measurement for a reason because we want to take some sort of uh, action inside the network. And right now we typically think of measuring the network doing a bunch of mumbo jumbo analysis and then going back into the network to tell it what to do about it. But if we're measuring and aggregating in the data plane, we can do the control action directly in the data plane too uh, for rapid response and better scalability. Not only do I want to detect a DOS attack, I want to block or rate limit it. Not only do I want to measure which, which paths might have good performance, I want to shift traffic towards using those paths. And so we've seen individual projects that have started to exploit that opportunity to do measurement and control together, but we completely lack programming abstractions that allow us to talk about the integration of measurement and control, or even deriving both the measurement and control from some higher level goal that, uh, that indicates how we want the network to behave rather than how we want to measure and control it. So I'll just conclude, I think uh, programmable forwarding planes are here today, but measurement is too. And we should really find more effective ways to make these forwarding planes and the measurement abstractions work together through better abstractions, better compilers, and better data structures that can take advantage of the unusual computational model that these switches present. And, and then finally, figure out how to integrate measurement and control. And then we can all sip margaritas by the sea because the network will be managing itself. Okay. Happy to take questions. Yeah, so what, what other packets are sharing the queue? I think like Nick's examples, most of them, correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, they, they involve tagging everything in the packet and then doing a lot of the analysis offline. I think that's appropriate one in a data center because often the host that's receiving those tagged packets is under your control, so you have an opportunity to do the analytics there. Uh, but that wouldn't be the case in a service provider network necessarily, where you, where you may want to do the analysis as you go. So I think being able to answer some of the questions Nick asked about, but to be able to do it without large tags or large offboard processing uh, would be good. I think also some of the switch targets are not able to analyze both directions of the traffic on the same link. For speed reasons, you may have pipelines, uh, one in each direction. So there's some analysis questions where you really need information from both directions of a flow where even if they're going through the same switch or even the same card, it may not be that easy to join the data together. So I think that's another. And anytime there's multiple flows, potentially at different locations in the network that affect a single application experience for a user, there's a nice opportunity there to figure out how to, how to join data from multiple locations to really construct what the quality of experience was for the user rather than the network level performance each packet or, or flow or even connection actually experienced. Oh, yeah, sorry. He's asking, is it useful to think of something like an SQL for, for networks? Yeah. I think so. And a number of the, the studies I mentioned kind of head in that direction. They're thinking of either using MapReduce, Spark-like abstractions, or SQL-like abstractions. I think that's very natural. And that's helped, I think, in raising the level of abstraction. But I think if we want to talk about application level behavior and quality of experience, there's still another, another level to go that would be above that. Should it be between layer to layer, three between layer, three layer four, completely overlaid? 
So the question is about metadata. I just make sure I understood yeah. your question. You, you want to know, let's say, what version of the routing state was operating in the network at the moment this packet was forwarded, or that kind of thing? You <laughs> done in the packet. Yeah, and I think there's, I did, it's funny, I almost debated adding a slide on this. I mean, there's often updates to the network policy over time. And you could also fruitfully imagine tagging a packet with what version of policy Nick got at this a little bit by saying what rule did the packet match, but you could imagine going further and saying what version of policy or what version of this rule uh, actually handled this packet. Because we often are stuck later doing joins, right? We've got packet measurements and we've got routing data or DNS data or other forms of data, and we're forced to join them after the fact based on timestamps. And without really knowing exactly when the rules hit the forwarding table, without knowing exactly when a DNS entry was updated, with the right tagging of information in the data plan, I think those joins could become quite a bit easier. We should be designing with the joining of the data in mind rather than struggling with it afterwards. But what is the right, right size, right place? I think it's query specific and it's kind of a wishy-washy answer, but I think it depends on the question you're trying to ask and which, which data sets you need to join later might determine what layer. In fact, it's not even clear layer is the right term to use here because we're really tagging the packets in some ways that's external from the actual data that's being used to forward the packet. So think of it as sort of a layerless kind of kind of concept. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? We have a lot of time. Can I make an observation? Yes. As an observation, but um, when we integrate measurement Yes. Right. And uh, so it suggests sort of a concrete example, which hopefully would be possible to abstract and describe in a more general way. Right. It might provide some sort of suggestions or guidance on how that, how that might be done more broadly. If you think about it, the, the, the behavior of the network is very much determined in real time. Right. Just control algorithms, which we all know are kind of a little bit hokey or a black ad hoc. Providing the, the means for the programmer to express how they want that integration to take place. Yeah, that's a great point. So for people who couldn't hear, the, the idea was if we want to integrate measurement and control, congestion control is sort of the canonical example of that and coming up with better abstractions to, for representing congestion control algorithms seems fruitful. And I think you could go even one step further there. Even congestion control itself is a distributed solution to some sort of optimization problem that the network operator is trying to articulate. And you could even imagine the interface for the programmer might not be the mechanisms of congestion control even, but the higher level uh, objective function if you will, that they're trying to optimize network-wide. And that, that could be even interesting in a way. Maybe optimization theory is the programming language of the future, if you will. Particularly if we're doing resource allocation, yes. it seems kind of natural. That's kind of weird our programming abstractions don't embed optimization yes. in them in the first place, because that's actually what people are are trying to do. Yes, yeah, so I think congestion control is one place to start. I think multipath load balancing or server load balancing, where you bring in now either server resources or path level properties for load balancing that takes congestion control one step further beyond a point-to-point -point connection to thinking about multiple paths or multiple servers. And then I think there are a bunch of security applications where we're uh, dynamically blocking or rate limiting uh, suspected DOS traffic. Seems like it seems like a third. I guess one thing I'm struggling with there, it's not obvious to me that there's one abstraction that's going to be useful for all of those applications. I mean, load balancing and congestion control seem similar enough that one might hope for a unified way of thinking about both. But DDoS and congestion control feel somewhat different to me, and I don't, I don't quite know if it's, um, it's glib of me to say, let's just integrate measurement and control. I don't know if, in fact, all the problems really have the same, need the same set of abstractions uh, or not. Okay, so the question is about the resource limits of the switch. I think it depends a lot on the target, and this becomes a question of where where should the where should the chip locate it and what allocate its resources. So in this picture, I showed it showed match action tables and registers, but it's a bit of a misnomer to to single them out. And in some cases, these may both be SRAMs, right? So the registers really just need the ability to to read, go to an ALU, 
uh, and do an update. And so if it becomes important to be able to do these stateful updates in the data plane, you can certainly imagine future switches having a much larger amount of sort of general purpose registers than, than we normally think of today. But, but second to your point, I think a lot of analysis questions, we're looking for a needle in the haystack. And so if we can find effective ways, you know, to actually customize how we use that limited state to the query at hand, if we're only looking for a few things, if we have the right algorithms and data structures, a small amount of state can be sufficient for either drilling down or approximating the answer to the question we want. And so I think that's a, a really interesting area. Right? We've got limited state, but limited stuff we care about. If we can get the get those aligned the right ways, we're fine. And if we don't, you're totally right. We're, we can't keep per flow state. We don't have enough registers. So it, might be a good idea. Sorry, yeah. oh, so it might be a good idea to uh, sort of notify all that decision making and always parse for that particular idea and uh, for that particular media that you're looking for. Right. I think of the parser as helping in, in looking only at the header fields we care about, and then I think the registers can be used carefully to look only at the flows we care about. Even even among all flows of a particular type, let's say by source IP or even microflow, only a small portion of them are the ones we actually care about. And figuring out how to use the limited state just for the ones we care about seems like a, a nice puzzle where I think there's a lot of work in compact data structure, streaming algorithm sketches from the theory community that actually can be directly brought to bear here. So thank you, uh, sorry to bring you up. Thanks.